Hi guys, it's Andre. I've got a confession. Cue the sad music, black bars, monocolour. That's better. After seven good years, I'm retiring the Sony A5000. And if you've read the title of the video, which I'm sure you have, then you'll know what with. The Sony ZV E10 interchangeable lens camera. There are a few reasons why I've upgraded to this new camera. Firstly, because I was looking for a good value and not overly expensive new camera, which films in 4K, exports files other than AVC HD, which are a pain to deal with on my Mac mini. In fact, if you do need help dealing with AVC HD files on a Mac, then watch my video linked up there. Also, I needed a camera that is able to keep up with the ever-changing modern market and that could provide something other than just a point and shoot camera. For me, the ZV E10 is able to do those things and as I already have e mount lenses from the A5000, I can use those lenses on this one. I feel that because of the cost of Sony lenses in general, once you've made that choice to get a Sony camera, you're a bit tied into the Sony ecosystem. Let's get over to the unboxing. So this is the Sony ZV-E10. I've only got the body version because I already have the kit lens from the Sony A5000 and a 55 to 210 millimeter lens as well. So let's get over to unboxing. So obviously you get all of the normal literature on your extended warranty. Guarantee, blah, 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 Instructions, many languages, only a little bit in English. <laughs> Maybe the bit I can read, just that bit, just that bit of the whole manual. Let's turn it around again. Now I'm gonna leave the camera until last. I think you get two different types of adapter depending on what region you're in. So you get the UK mains. And I'm assuming this is a European one. Never ever have any use for that. Just that one. So that'll probably stay in the box. You've got the Sony shoulder strap, which clips around the camera. Got a USB-A to USB-C lead, which is good. Good to see cameras using USB-C. And you've got a windscreen with the adapter that fits on top of the camera. You've got the AC adapter, fits between the power socket and the USB A to USB C lead. That goes in there, gives you a bit of an extra boost. And you've got a battery. And it's the same battery that is in the Sony A5000. This is the NPFW50 battery. So because I've got this Sony A5000, I've actually got three of these batteries already. So with this one, I've now got four batteries as well as the dummy battery as well. And then let's get over to the camera. So finally, we get to the Sony ZV E10. Out of the box, it comes with the body cap on, and if we take that off, you'll be able to see that large APS-C 24.2 megapixel Exmor CMOS sensor. As you can see, the ZV E10 is an E-mount lens camera, so if you've already got E-mount lenses, like I have with the 16 to 15 millimeter and the 55 to 210 millimeter lenses then these will fit on the camera with ease if you do choose this version of the camera with the kit lens you'll actually get this one the 16 to 50 millimeter 
I've heard many negative thoughts on this kit lens, but as a starting point, it should be good enough. I will be using this lens mainly on the channel for a while, so I can save up my pennies for a better wide angle lens. So there you go, it's actually a nice fit. If I put my 55 to 210 millimeter lens on as well. There we go. And if we compare it to the Sony A5000, the sensor actually looks similar, if not the same size. See so both E mount frame lenses. Just plug them at the top. You can see that the ZVE10 is a little bit bigger. So if we take a closer look at the camera, so you've got the on off switch, you've got the camera shutter, you've got the zoom controls, the defocus button, you've got the video shutter, and you've got the dial to that changes certain settings as well. Not like that. As you can see, compared to the A5000, it's basic features, it's the on off switch and then the zoom controls. So you've got the camera's internal microphone here. And then next to that, you've got a hot shoe where you can either fit an external microphone or even use the windscreen that comes with the with the camera. And there you go, fits just over the top like that. <laughs> now on the back, got the menu button, function, the normal dials, the rubbish, and this also has the product focus button as well and viewing your pictures. If we get a look at the what's inside there, inside here, you've got a socket so that you can put in an external microphone. So here you've got your USB-C input, your HDMI input, and then also an input for a 3.5 millimeter headphone as well. If you look to the bottom, there's the quarter inch socket, so, so you can fit this to a tripod. If you look in here, you've got the battery compartment, and also the SD card fits in there as well. And then there's the PS, the resistance, you've got the screen, which obviously comes out. And if we turn it around, it rotates as well. only rotates in one direction, so it doesn't fold down that way, it only goes up that way. And there you go, that's the Sony ZV-E10, or ZV-E10, depending on where you're from. Let's have a look at a few examples with this Sony ZV-E10. So I'm using the built-in microphone on the Sony ZV-E10. Just let me know what you think of the microphone and its sound quality in the comments below. So I'm using the built-in microphone on the Sony ZV-E10 camera. Just let me know in the comments what you think of it compared to using the Blue Yeti microphone that I usually use on all of my videos. So audio from the onboard ZV-E10 and audio from the Blue Yeti microphone attached to my iPhone 13 Pro. So I use the product showcase mode of this.
So this is me using the Sony ZV-E10 on a mini tripod. I'm actually using the Manfrotto mini tripod. And at this length, I feel like because I've got long arms, the length to do vlogging sort of thing isn't too bad. But I am using the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. It's not too bad. I've got my arms currently stretched out all the way. All the way and then looking on the viewfinder, it's actually not too bad of a length for vlogging sort of thing. But I just feel like if I was to have my arm out, I just feel for long periods of time, it'd probably get a bit tired because it's it does feel a little bit weighty, but you get used to that. But certainly not bad with the 16 to 50 millimeter lens. So now I'm going to test out the defocus of the camera. There is a dedicated button for this, so I'm going to see if using the 16 to 15 millimeter lens, see if I can get these objects here a little bit of defocused. Let's have a look. So I'm going to press. So it's currently set to clear. So I'm going to press the defocus button now. See if that makes any difference. So that's currently in defocus. Has that changed? Just let me know in the comments below. I'm going to press it to clear again obviously one of the limitations to this lens it might not be able to do enough a lot of that bokeh effect so defocus set on again and clear obviously if it was if I had a bit of a way of a background it might be a little bit better but at this range it does a little bit of the defocusing so I intend to spend the next few weeks getting further acquainted with the Sony ZV E10 and slowly incorporate its use within the YouTube channel and creation process of these videos and you never know with the capabilities of this vlogging camera what you'll get in the future stay tuned for my full review video on this camera if there is anything you want me to have a look at on this camera in the meantime while I'm getting used to it just let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to the channel for some more tech related content and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all from me today, I'll see you on the next one, bye. Oh and by the way, if you ever catch me saying ZV10, just also let me know in the comments below.